What's up guys, Runner Runner Poker here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm bringing you episode 36 of my poker vlog and my goodness, do I have an episode for you. Today, we're gonna be covering the biggest lifetime win that I have had to date. Super excited, ran super hot, super pure. I mean, I just couldn't really lose a hand. Only lost one hand, I think, or two, I lost two hands. Won some big all-ins, doubled up a couple times. Really just, I mean, I don't know what more to say. Let's get right into the hands. Let's go. Alrighty, starting off this session, we're looking down at ace queen offsuit in middle position, facing an early position open to 20. Although this is an early to raise range, the table's kind of shorthanded, so I think that you could pump it up light here. I three bet to 65. Folds back the round to them, and they make the call. Heads up in position with about 130 in the middle to a board of deuce four five rainbow. Although this board is going to favor the calling range a little bit more than ours, both players shouldn't have really connected with this board that much, and we've got a wheel draw. When they check, I bet 100. They show us 9-10 offsuit and muck, and I guess it's going to be one of those days of getting it in against garbage. Hey, I'm certainly not complaining. Not too much longer after we joined that game, it broke, and that's when we get moved to a different table, and for this hand we're looking down at 6-4 of hearts in the small blind facing a hijack open to 20. I decide to get real creative here and 3-bet up to 65. This eventually kicks out the big blind and the hijack continues. So with about 130, 140 in or so, we get a very interesting board of queen 5-6. Now I'm not really actually sure who has the range advantage on this board, I think it could go either way. Nevertheless, I decide to down bet to 50, which what I would do with my top pairs and over pairs. Hijack calls, we see a very interesting turn, the 8 of spades. Now in this spot, I think that I could actually have some ace high flushes as well as some ace high flush draws, as well as maybe some over pairs containing the flush draw, as well as some queens. I could also have some weaker hands, like pair plus flush draw hands, like the hand that I do have, or maybe like 7-8 suited. All that being said, now that we have some more equity with the gutter, I keep my foot on the gas for a bet of 125. I don't really like this bet, because I didn't really pay attention to how much they have behind, and it's not a lot, maybe 150, 175 or so. Nevertheless, they call, and I could go into a lot of technical detail, on what to do on across different river types, but luckily I don't have to, since we just hit it. That said, I put the rest of the money in, they call, and we turn over a pretty disgusting runner, runner, gutter straight. Hey, I mean, when it's your day to get lucky, miracles can happen. Remember, we're not runner, runner poker for nothing. To continue on with the excitement this time, we're looking down at pocket tens, middle position facing a button straddle and two limps. I bumped the action up to 60. We managed to isolate the small blind heads up. So in position with about 140 in the middle, we find an absolutely amazing board, finding middle set on queen 10 four. Small blind checks and I decide to down bet here with my strong hand. I decide to bet 50 and the run game continues as we get raised to 200. Now, I decided to smooth call here, relinquishing control of the betting lead since we're in position, and we can just raise them at any point we feel like it. Turn card is another absolutely beautiful card. It's four, giving us second boat. Interestingly, small blind checks, and I've got a good hand, so I want to build a pot, so I bet 250. And then, this happens. Call. Tens full. Tens full. That's right. We get snap jammed on, and of course, we snap call back. The table makes fun of me a little bit for instantly putting me on queen's full, but we've effectively got the same hand. I agree to run it twice, and the first river is a really scary one, it's another queen. Second one's a brick, but we actually managed to scoop against what we're told was pocket kings. Let's keep the run alive. Hey guys, Alex and Post here. While they stack these chips, I just want to once again shout out the Daytona Beach Racing and Card Club for being my home card room. If y'all want to see me win more big pots like this one, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. It really helps the channel out a lot, and we're so close to 2,000 subscribers. Let's keep building up that stack too, together. Thanks guys. With a monster stack and itching to play some multi-way pots, we look down at 9-10 of hearts in the middle position, and we decide to limp behind here. We end up going seven ways to this flop, and we're seeing even more good cards. As the flop comes king, queen, jack, that's right, we flop the bottom straight. The action is going to get really wonky on this flop, so try to follow along the best you can. The big blind decides to try to take a stab for 20. There's one call, and with effectively the second nuts, I decide to raise it up here right away to 85. Now the small blind sticks around and calls my 85 after checking. The big blind folds 
and the first collar folds. So I don't really know what to make of that, but we're heads up now in position against the same player we just stacked and the turn kind of just decides that our, our run is coming to a close. As it's queen, one of the worst cards because I've asked for, our hand gets a lot worse. Swap all checks. And I just decide to take the free card and see how much worse it gets. Well, you thought the turn was bad? How about the 10 of clubs on the river? I mean, we don't even beat bluffs anymore. Small blind checks, and I of course check it back, throwing it straight, but the small blind somehow manages to turn over ace four of clubs. What? I mean, I know we don't beat bluffs, but I would have bet there, probably. I don't know. Tough run. I mean, when's the last time you've seen that bad of a run out for a flopped straight? Yikes. All right, so we get moved tables again, okay? We get moved from the must move to the main game, and we're kicking off the main game with a banger right when we sit down in the cutoff, looking down at ace king offsuit. That's right, folds to us in the cutoff. We may get 30 to go. Button calls before it gets back to the big blind with three bets to 75. Now, this is a pretty small three bet size. Honestly, it doesn't really signify a lot of player strength or even hand strength. That said, it could be some really strong hands, but I block aces and kings. If they are a weak player, I want to get as much money in now as I can. So I decided to four bet to 225. Button gets out of the way, and the big blind slowly checks their cards before just calling. That said, we're going heads up in position to a flop with almost 100 bigs already in the pot and about 500 left in the big blind stack to an absolutely amazing board. We crush another one on ace, king, seven. You guys want a literal dream scenario? How about four bet pot you smash the board with top two with stacks already committed against a player that you don't think has much studying under their belt and then they lead into you that's right they donk lead back into us for like half their remaining stack i mean man bless you if you've got the last combo of aces or kings for a set or even a set of sevens we're all in they actually look like they may actually fold for a second but after some deliberation they get the rest of the money in I agree to run two boards just to appease the crowd. On the first board, we boat up. On the second board, we just hold our top two pair. Now, four bet pot, they donked into us when we have range advantage on this board. Any guesses as to what they could have? Try ace eight of hearts on for size. This is why I love Daytona poker. Come on down. After we get a seat change to cover the table in its entirety, we look down at seven eight of hearts and make it 25 to go. Now, the same player from the previous hand is the only caller, folds all the way back around, so we're going heads up, out of position to a board we flop absolutely nothing. Just, no, it was like queen, 10, four, no heart, or something. I know that I don't really have to keep betting. I can only just bet my value hands against the station to stay profitable, so I just check and go into give up mode. That said, they check back. So we're getting a free one on the turn, and I think it gave us a little bit more equity. It didn't really matter in the context of the hand, since I was gonna be betting anyway. I check, planning to fold to just any aggression at all. Our opponent then takes a second to look at their cards, deliberating what they're trying to do, and then they straight up just muck. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. My plan was to give up, and somehow I didn't even have to do that to win. They said that they were just sure I was going to check raise, so they didn't want to give me the opportunity, and they just wanted to muck to get it out of the way. But my plan was to fold myself, and that's how you win at this game. It's a psychological game. Okay, okay. It's time to donate some back. For this hand, we've got pocket nines. There's three limps to us, and I decided to make it 50 to go to try to isolate. Yeah, okay. We end up going four ways to this flop. So with 200 in, at least we're in position, we get a board that comes three, four, six. Checks all the way to us. And I think here that we don't really have to bet over pairs here. We could just go to the check call mode, but honestly, I decided to take the betting line and I bet for 125. We are instantly punished by the small blind, who is the same player from the previous two hands, who's played all sorts of garbage, as they min-click it back to 250. Folds back to us, and honestly, I just feel mega dead against a min-click against this kind of player. I feel like a donk lead is a lot worse than a min-click check raise. I think check raises against this player type are just way more scary than leads. Nevertheless, I don't really want to fold an overpair to a min-click, as there still could be some pair plus straight draw type hands that we're ahead of, so I decided to make the call. Turn card brings a five. There's a four line around the board now, and the small blind bets 200. It's just such a sick price. I feel gross folding an overpair here, but we have no redraw. We're against the station who's showing aggression on a board that favors them. 
honestly, I think we're just gonna fold this one and look for a better spot. We fold, and the reeds turn out to be pretty good, as the small blind is proud to turn over the 5-7 of diamonds, showing that they did indeed flop it. I wasn't kidding. You had it. No, he flopped it. I flopped it. Yeah, he flopped yeah. it. Alrighty, for the last hand that I'm going to cover from this session, it's really one of the most frustrating hands I've played in a while. We're looking down an ace queen of clubs, and we make it 35 to go. We get two callers, those being the hijack and the small blind. So we're going three ways, sandwiched in between two players with about 100 in there, and we literally just flop the nuts. Flop the ace high flush, feeling real good. Small blind checks, and honestly, I decide here with the nuts that I'm gonna get a little trappy, and I check. Luckily for our plan, the hijack bets $80. Even more luckily, the small blind calls, and at this point, is it time to pull the trigger? Well, I don't really know. I feel like if I raise here, our hand is gonna be pretty face up, so I decide to keep laying the trap and smooth call. And then, our plan just comes crumbling down when the turn is another club, pretty much killing our action. Small blind checks, I check, hoping that the hijack's gonna keep betting, but of course they don't, and check. The river, to make matters worse, pairs the board. Small blind checks, and I try to just salvage some value and bet 300, but of course, both players fold. Honestly, not really proud of how I played this hand. Feel like we could have got a little bit more somewhere. Feel like I bet in the wrong places and checked in the wrong places. Maybe bet where I should have checked, checked where I should have bet, but hey, I don't really know. We're all learning together. It's all about the game. That's just about gonna wrap up the hands for today. Into the game for 700, out of the game for 2550, booking the biggest win I've ever had running super hot. We made 1850 in a single sitting. Damn, I mean, that's pretty good for me. As for the B-roll today, we are in Depot Park in Gainesville, trying to explore Gainesville a little bit more. Walked around here, gonna go play some pool with one of my friends now. I hope you have a great day. Try to get outside, try to move yourself. Remember, keep your body healthy, keep your mind healthy. This is Runner Runner Poker. Have a good one. You knew I was going to check race. Yeah.